Procut 9.0 machine down at the Northampton EBC Brake Centre. And Jason, the engineer from Hawika, the UK agents, is just setting it all up for us. What's that little bit of kit you've got there, Jason? That snake uh, looking thing this, this with the dial a, gauge. This is a standard DTI dial gauge, um, but for the use of this machine, it comes with a, a flexible gooseneck for attaching it to the car. Um, obviously, on a two post ramp, you've got no area to attach a magnetic base to. So, with this mold grip and gooseneck setup, you can simply clip the mold grips to a fixed part on the car, on the vehicle. You can set the dial gauge roughly to where you want the machine to be operated, in this area here. Lock the gauge in position, and then it's ready for when you bring the machine up to measure the run out of the so machine. So tell us uh, more, Jason, about what that little uh dial gauge tool does. Okay, this, this, this dial gauge indicator, it's a multi-purpose tool. Um, you can use it to actually see what the machine is running out at when you've got the machine attached to the car when it's calibrated itself, which we'll see later. You can also use it to measure the actual run out on the disc face. Now, on a, on a slotted and, and drilled disc, it's very difficult to do. Um, on a conventional flat disc, you just simply mount the, the gauge to an appropriate part where it will reach the face of the disc with a needle on turn the rotor round and it will indicate the actual variation in thickness around the disc and you, you can measure at various points across the disc. Well, will it also measure the run out then Jason? Yeah, yes it will, as, as, we, as we go round, if we set the, the indicator again on a, on a flat conventional disc to zero, the, the run out will indicate with the sweep of the needle. Um, every manufacturer has a, a, a limit of run out if it's out of that limit, the machine, the, the disc will need remachining. We've got John and Mick here, two of the owners from the EBC Brake Centre in Northampton. So what you're saying then, John, is um, if, if a disc is in good condition and has only got a small amount of wear, you can skim it over at a much lower cost than trying to force the customer to buy a brand new disc at several hundred pounds then. So that's going to be a big cost saving for the customer, plus he's going to have a disc that's absolutely in line with his car and not going to have any brake vibration or run out. There you go. Great. So we've uh, set up the machine on this little Ford Fiesta on our training and test day. And what do you think of that disc then, John? Is there run out on that disc? Definitely. You can see the, the colour difference there. See, where, see it's cut and it's missing to the dark and light. Wind the tool, let's see if it gives an intermittent cut. Right. Well you can hear a clear intermittent cutting sound which shows that there is distortion and misalignment on this disc. That's a picture of the Because you're a bit quiet, you might add a little bit more, can yeah. you? So that's the rough cut then, Jason, just to uh, prove yeah. that the disc was in need of machining. Yeah, that, that's just a, just a rough cut, so we're not, we're not too interested about the cosmetics of the finish. Um, now, to put a final finish onto the disc, we need to release the cutting arms, and then turn the dials in, just two lines, which is represents four thousandths of an inch on each side. Before we get the machine cutting back, we'll fix one of the two dampers, anti-resonance dampers. Now, what's so, the purpose of that damper then? What does that stop? All, all these do, just just a slight pressure that these dampers put on the disc stops the the tool chatter, the resonance or vibration that's created through the machining process. So with that damper on, that means that the ProCut machine can cut and reface any slotted or drilled rotor without any chatter marks at all. So it is possible to resurface slotted drilled rotors of any type with the ProCut machine? Yes, per perfectly possible. So we're nearing the end of the cut now Jason and you can clearly see the smooth cut that the machine has done and the irregularities 
in alignment on that disc. Yeah, the irregularities are more obvious as we're coming out towards the edge. You can see the, 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 the fluctuating pattern on the disc as it rotates. Now the cut's finished, um, the operator can leave the machine coming back and, and rotating. So it will run onto the automatic stop in a, in a few moments and actually stop the machine itself. And now the machine stopped, that is the actual finish of the brake disc. Slotted and dimpled brake disc, like new. Four or five thou skim, discs have got thousands of miles of use left in them. Well Jason, that was interesting. Here we've got a car that we use as a test setup. Uh, the driver came in without complaining of vibration, but we've tested his brake rotors and we found they got a lot of run out. So, what caused that run out, do you think, on that disc? Well, there's various reasons that can cause it, but on, on this particular car, we've been informed by the customer that uh, he did bump the car into a kerb in the snow uh, that the, the winds had just passed. Can we have so, a confession on that? Then here is the driver, Adam. Yeah, did you nudge this car into the kerb somewhere in the winter? Yeah, I, I haven't um, noticed vibration on it, but it just shows that uh, if you um, do the snot the kerb, what I can see reasonably lightly, um, and then I remember them realise that that's probably why we've got all this um, irregularities in the disc There you go. So you got away with that one. And as a special treat, this car is going to have a new set of the latest uh, EDC green stuff pads, just to top off the job, make sure the brakes are absolutely... OK, so we're over to the other side of the car now. We've got the other side uh, running straight. What's happening on this side then, Jason? Well, we can see with the, with the gauge actually on the edge of the machine, it's measuring the, the movement or lateral movement of the machine in relation to the, the hub. Obviously we, we can't start cutting the disc with the, the cutters coming back from side to side. You, you just won't get an accurate cut. So before we cut the disc on each hub, we just simply press a button on the machine, which then puts the machine into calibration mode, which will align the machine to the hub. And if we watch the gauge, you will see it gradually come down to a level of about one, one to two thousandths of an inch at the far end of the plate. We can see there, the machine stopped calibrating by, by the clicking noise disappearing. At the gauge now, we now have pr probably less than a thousandth of an inch. So when we transmit that run out back to where we're going to be machining on the disc, it's a quarter of a thou, if, if that, ne next to nothing at all. Okay, so what have we got here now then, John? This disc doesn't sound uh, to be as distorted as the near side one where the driver hit the kerb. Yeah, you can see the colouring where it went light and dark. This is, this is one continuous band. Oh, more or less, the disc uh, is more or less okay Yeah, then. no problems at all. But we're going to go through and skim it just to true it up and match the other side anyway. Once you've done one side of the car, highly advisable to do the other side as well, otherwise you're going to have different friction levels on the left and right and the brakes are going to pull to one side. That's my suggestion. Set a disc on a new pad, you really set a pad down yeah. and this is still okay. Yeah. It's advisable to do this and put a new pad down. Thanks Jason. So we've seen that the Pro-Cut on-car brake lathe can help a lot with correcting misalignment. Um, but what about um, a vehicle that just comes in, he hasn't got misalignment but he's got some uh, ribbed or worn brake discs and he wants to have new pads fitted. What's your recommendation there? Well the recommendation for a pad change is if, if the disc is worn out below the serviceable limit is to have the disc replaced with, with new items. If you've got enough thickness left on the disc it, it must be refaced. If, if you take a disc that has already worn a set of pads out the disc will still be serviceable, but it won't be flat anymore. It won't line up with a new pad. Um, on some of the European vehicles with a drilled disc, it will create quite a heavy ribbing on the surface of the disc. And obviously to put new pads on that, it will take a long, long time for them to mate into that surface on the brake disc. So just by coming along with the pro cut machine, taking away the ribs, making the disc flat again, to accept the, the brand new flat pad, you've got 100% contact surface from the, the pad to the disc so your brakes will work as soon as you take it out of the workshop and the pads will wear more evenly and last longer so so you say it will save you money yes it will save you money potentially by machining the disc on that pad change the pads will wear more evenly and therefore last longer perfect thank you yeah. and here's our little ford fiesta setup car perfect brakes